call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is an open meeting of the Seward, Nebraska governing body. The city of Seward abides by the Nebraska Open Meetings Act in conducting business. A copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is displayed on the north wall of this meeting room facility as required. Disclosure of meeting recording processes is posted in the meeting room. A participant sign-in sheet is available for use by any citizen addressing the council. Presenters shall approach the podium, state their name and address for the clerk's record, and are asked to limit remarks to five minutes. All remarks shall be directed to the mayor, who shall determine by whom any appropriate response shall be made. The City of Surrey reserves the right to adjust the order of items on this agenda if necessary and may elect to take action on any of the items listed. Please call the roll. Wilkin? Here. Taylor? Here. Tanya? Here. Colterman? Present. Miller? Singleton? Here. Streisand? Here. Morgan? Here. All right, first we have our consent agenda for this evening. Move to approve science. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Moved by Streisand, second by Singleton. Please register your vote. Please display the vote. Wilkin, Taylor, Tanya, Colterman, Singleton, Streisand, Bergen. All right, next we have public hearings. Our first public hearing is consideration of a voluntary annexation of part of Lot 1, Block 5, Prairie View Edition, and a portion of Sunflower Avenue. Welcome. Thank you. Um, you'll see in your packet there, there's a, a letter. Uh, it's a voluntary annexation by uh, Bob Benish of Aspen Builders requesting that a portion of the final plat that was approved uh, back in November, I believe, uh, be annexed in when they set up the plat uh, and figured the lot sizes and that they needed just a little bit more property than was currently within the uh, city limits. Um, he, eventually he will annex the entire property out there uh, but for this time being we just need to annex that little bit of, of uh, property to the east there. Thanks Tim. Any questions or comments from the council? It is a public hearing, so we know what the public comment portion. If you'd like anyone from the public wish to comment on this item, please come forward at this time. Seeing none from the public, I will close the public comment portion of the public hearing, return to the council for any questions or comments. Please just take a simple motion. Uh, on this one, it, it's is this an ordinance? it is an ordinance. Okay. So we'll need to introduce the ordinance. It's an annexation, so we'll read it one time only. You have to read it three separate times for any annexation, according to our city attorney. <laughs> so with that, unless there's any questions or comments, would someone like to introduce the ordinance? I'll move to introduce the ordinance. All right. Is an ordinance declaring the annexation of certain contiguous and adjacent tracts of land, urban and suburban in character, more specifically a part of Lot 1, Block 5, Prairie View Edition, and a part of Sunflower Avenue to the City of Seward, to the corporate limits of the City of Seward, Nebraska, and extending the limits thereof accordingly to, to describe the real estate to be annexed and its boundaries to provide for publication of this ordinance and pamphlet form to provide for a time when this ordinance shall take effect. And that is the first reading as far as we go. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Tim. So we'll bring it back next time. We'll move on then to item number two under public hearings. Consideration of an amendment to the City of Seward Unified Land Development, EODO, Chapter 410 Zoning and Subdivision, Article 32.5, um, Accessory Buildings and Garages. Tim. All right. You'll, you'll notice in your packet I highlighted the text as it currently reads in our ULBO. And we've had a number of questions over the last couple of years what the maximum size of an accessory building on a lot of less than one acre is. 
Well, everything we read prior said 750 square feet. Um, somebody had mentioned they didn't think that was right, so we did a lot of digging. We went back to October 21 of 2003, and you will see that it went before Planning Commission and City Council at that time and was approved. Uh, our uh, current uh, Planning Commission Chairman uh, went against it at that time, but has since seen the ways and uh, it was an 8-0 recommendation for putting the 900 square feet in. How long did that take you? It, it took some on and off searching for a while. Mm -hmm. no. no. Thank you, Tim. Is there any questions or comments from the council? It is a public hearing, so I'll open the public comment portion of the public hearing. You know, one from the public wish to come forward and speak on this item. Welcome. Gary Rall, 404 Lincoln Street. Um, thanks for finding that. I'm, I'm endorsing that number and uh, hope that you all just incorporate it as you suggest. It's already been uh, acted on years ago. We're just fixing the code. Uh, that's it. Any questions? I don't see any. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it. Anyone else, anyone else from the public wish to comment on this item? If no one else, I will close the public comment portion of the public hearing and return to the council for any other questions or comments. Yeah. Or I'd ask someone to introduce the ordinance. Introduced by Kayla. All right. An ordinance to amend the municipal code of the city of Seward, chapter 410 zoning and subdivision, article 32, supplemental development regulations to better define maximum size of residential accessory buildings to repeal all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict to provide for an effective day to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form. The ordinance has been read by title and is designated as ordinance number 2023-7 and the title is hereby approved. I need a motion to dispense the statutory rule. So moved. Second. A motion by Coulterman, second by Streisand. Is there any further discussion? Please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Kaler, Tanya, Coulterman, Singleton, Streisand, Bergen. This is ordinance number 2023-7. Would anyone like to move that this ordinance be passed and adopted as read? So moved. Second. Second. Motion. Okay. Motion by Bergen, seconded by Streisand. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question is, shall ordinance number 2023-7 be finally passed and adopted? Please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Taylor, Tanya, Coulterman, Singleton, Streisand, Oregon. I will need one final motion to make uh, this ordinance a part of the permanent record. I'll make a motion to make it a part of the permanent record. Second. The motion by Coulterman, seconded by Singleton. Address your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor: Wilkin, Taylor, Tanya, Coulterman, Singleton, Streisand, Morgan. All right. Um, next, we have administrative items. Item number one: presentation acceptance of Seward Memorial Library annual report. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, for those of you who are wondering why the heck I'm here, I brought you a copy of the statute that says I have to be here, <laughs> and what my annual report has to include. So you can check it out. Receive the document in your electronic packet with all of these statistics graphically displayed. Um, we had a year that is was still rebounding from the two COVID years prior. I'm happy to say rebounding, so things are slowly returning back to pre-COVID numbers. As much as I think they will this year that we're in currently, things are looking even better. So. It's amazing what two years of change will do to people's habits. And so we are trying to adjust as well. We had a great summer, lots of kids. Nikki, who started during COVID, said, we're so busy. I said, no, this is normal. You just don't know what normal is because you started when it was not normal. 
I'm happy to answer any questions. The candy flavors, by the way, the white ribbon is milk chocolate peanut butter, and the green ribbon is dark chocolate mint, in case you want to trade. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Becky. Any questions or comments from the council? I, I would just say I've been on that board for I think like four years before I now move. Um, you guys do really extraordinary work and you touch a lot of people in a lot of different ways. And I, I think at least when I was there, I, I knew you did a lot of good stuff, but I didn't even know how much. So I um, really appreciate what you and your team do Thanks. and the difference you guys make in the community. So thank you. Uh, just say this year we're 20 years old in that building, so we're planning some special events. If you're a fan of mysteries, we have two mystery authors coming, one in May, William Kent Kruger. And the Longmire creator is coming in October, so if you're a fan of the TV show or the books, mm -hmm. October 8th for that. So cool. Looking for some other things to celebrate the 20 years in the building. And I can't, I just want to say, I can't thank Becky enough with how well she runs that facility. Um, the, in the six years that we worked together, the trials and tribulations, COVID, staffing issues, the loss of staff. I mean, we've just had all kinds of things. Uh, and she has been tried and true through the whole thing. And I appreciate every day I get to work with her. She does an incredible job of it. Any other questions or comments or? We need a motion to accept the report. I'll make a motion to accept the report. Second. We'll have a motion by Colton, second by Wooden. Please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Taylor, Tanya, Colton, Singleton, Streisand, Worgen. All right, item number two. Consideration of a memorandum of understanding with Paul Grass Development for a place study for property located at 534 North 10th Street. Okay. Yes, this was a request. It kind of came in oddly, but um, I knew that this project and area down there had some interest, and then I think COVID kind of tempered it for a while. Uh, this is the project that's kind of bordered on both um, 9th and 10th Street, con considered the Concord Apartments. That whole block takes up three apartment complexes, and then the northeast corner of the block is currently vacant, essentially. Uh, I think they have some interest in filling that block, and so one of the first parts in looking at what potential economic opportunities they have is looking at whether it's eligible for TIF. It is not currently in the blighted and substandard area of the city. Um, and I think they begin their discussion with um, our economic development director, Jonathan Jank, and he kind of referred back to the work that we did uh, with the... Um, Originally, it was Plex, but the Caden Apartments across from Concordia. And how we essentially went in ahead of that by motion of the City Council, and we went and did a blight study just for that area. Uh, it was paid for by Caden. There was no risk by the City. There was no requirement that we adopt the blight study, just that we allowed it to happen and that we would take it up and look at it once it came in. Same thing here. We're not obligated. I've already talked to Amy Hossi at... Um, RDG, we're not obligated to pay anything and we're not obligated to approve it or blight it, but this is the first step. If it's not determined to be, well then they don't even, we're not even discussing any TIF opportunities or anything else after that because the study comes back and says it's not. If I had to be a guessing person knowing the law due to the nature of the age of the property alone, it probably will likely be close. Usually you're looking for two out of the five or so elements. So age is one of them. So they'll hit that one right away. I think those apartments were built in approximately the 70s. So um, I've spoken with Dave Schmidt uh, and his son uh, signed this. And so this is kind of just their first step. I didn't have any particular concern unless we were really adamant we didn't even want to consider it for blighting potentially if it came through. Um, then I would say maybe don't approve this, but... Again, we don't have any risk in moving forward with it and no obligation to blight it. So it at least it gets their project moving further down the line for consideration. I can answer any other questions. The, I, I, they, were, they knew they wanted to keep this one moving, but I did ask them to come. They were unable because of prior obligations to come tonight. So it wasn't like they blew us off or anything. I was very 
If you can, please have somebody here just because you'll explain it better than I will. So. I think you did a good job explaining it. Well, I don't like to sell somebody else's project because it's not <laughs> the project itself is not in front of us. It's really just about whether we want to take consideration. Uh, there is a limit to our blighted areas. I believe it is, I want to say 34%, 33%. And we're under that. Currently. This one, this isn't a huge area like 50 acres or something. It's a very small area. So it's not going to push it up very far. But that's always a consideration, and, and that will be in the blight study. They'll note that, that and, where and we're you, approaching. And you can remove areas yep. from it to as offset they, as they get So if you, right? if you get to that threshold. Or just in general, we can cut them out. Yeah. And, and there's nothing magical about our original blight study map other than we wanted to include as much commercial um, as we possibly could because the assumption was that's where you're going to see these types of projects for the most part. And so like all downtown and you know that, those areas were the original, but um, there's again, there's nothing magical about that other than that we were looking to try and, because there is a cost to it, so you don't necessarily want to have to pay for a study every every month or two if somebody else comes along, but if they're willing to pay for the study and there's no guarantees, we're really not at any risk to go forward with it at this time. I'm supportive of moving forward with the study. They're gonna absorb the cost and we'll just get more information. I'll make a motion to move forward. Second. Second. All right. Motion put in a second by Singleton. Any further discussion? Saying none, please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Loken, Taylor, Tanius, Holtzman, Singleton, Streisen, Worgen. Okay. Item number three, consideration of a request to allow for the construction of a fence in the city right-of-way at 353 South 3rd Street. Welcome back, Tim. All right, you're going to have to bear with me on this one. This is a little bit of a complicated one. We had a request from Plex Construction to fence a gas valve station in the front of one of their triplexes. Um, in looking through it, we started looking at a variance and that. Well, we came across that to put anything in the right of way needs to come to city council first, <laughs> just for the permission to do it before we can act on the variance, which is the fence height. They want a six foot white vinyl fence put around this. So the first hurdle is to get it in front of you folks, take a look at it. If you'll notice in the pictures, when they first were permitted to start building, there was a little cabinet there, two foot by three foot. They had asked Black Hills to paint that cabinet for them to make it a little bit more sightly. Well, they took it one step further, upgraded the valves and the whole system and you see what they ended up with. We asked them if there were any more of those in town. There's five of them that exist within the city of Seward. And you'll see the other four pictures. One's at Hughes Brothers, there's one at the Civic Center, and two on Concordia's campus. So none others in a residential area within town. Well, as buyers potentially looked at it, they noted a safety issue. They felt that it presented a, a pretty nice jungle gym if they have kids. Um, Black Hills didn't too much care for that. They have offered to put the fence around, but again, they noted to the builder that the city had to give permission to do it. So tonight they're looking for what you decide, whether they'll allow the fence, then on March 4th, or I'm sorry, March 1st, should you allow the fence, it'll go to the Board of Adjustments for, we only allow a four foot fence in the front yard. And so we'll tackle the six foot height. Uh, no side issues, there's no driveways. It's not on the corner of an intersection, it's in the middle of a block. Um, so we don't see any issues there. So if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. So Tim, I did have yes. a question. So I'm looking at these photos, I saw the original the yeah. cabinet. Yeah. And then this yellow surrounded thing yes. is what is there now. Yes. So the fence will go around the yellow yeah, they'll, they'll fence in that yellow with a six-foot fence. Now, there's some kind of solar yeah, battery thing that'll probably stick above the six-foot fence. Okay. But with that six-foot vinyl fence, it'll at least deter everybody from hanging on it or right. sitting on and, it. Or, and has anybody, I mean, I assume the neighbors would be fine with it being fenced in because it would 
probably look nicer. Correct. And actually, the neighbor to the north just called today with another issue and asked about the zoning issue that was coming up. And she's like, that's fantastic. Helps her out. So. Oh, yeah. It's not kind of an eyesore. It, it is an eyesore, yes. And it's the only one in the entire city in a residential. Now, granted, that was not a residential district when the box was there. Right. It was the old school playground. Right. But. I don't see a reason to not move forward with it. Rich? Why six feet? I mean, what six feet seems to be. A lot of the, if you look at the picture, a lot of the apparatus in there is higher than the four foot. Okay. So not only are we doing a safety thing, we're doing kind of an aesthetic thing. And keep the kids from going out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. We like to call those attractive nuisances. That's what it yeah. is. <laughs> Any other questions or comments from the council? If not, I believe we just need a simple motion. I will make a motion to approve the exception here. Is that how we want to do it? Uh, it's the permission here. It's on permission. permission. Provide for permission fence the right for the way. fence in the right in way. The right way. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion by discussion I should mention by the way uh, Kyle from Plex is here if you have any questions for him I neglected to mention that so. you're about to win so I don't know what to say another discussion the rest of your folks please just wait the vote voting in favor of Wilkins Taylor Tanya Colterman Singleton, Strice, and Worgen. Thank you. Thank you. Right, item four, consideration and approval of bid documents for the Park Avenue Bradford Street Storm Sewer Improvements Project and authorize the city to seek construction bids. Mike, welcome. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> so we've discussed these uh, two projects uh, in the past. We uh, now are ready to advertise and propose advertising them a week from tomorrow with your approval here. We have the Park Avenue <coughs> Storm Sewer Improvements Project. There's 50 sheets there. Uh, this is at the bottom of the hill. This is going from 6th Street, essentially 8th Street, uh, discharge into an open channel uh, waterway. Uh, we're going to be adding two 42-inch uh, elliptical um, pipe uh, and modifying, updating, replacing some of an existing 36. So the park at 7th Street and Park Avenue, Park Avenue Park, on the south side it looks like a sidewalk that's actually, that's crowned, it's actually the top of that 36 inch pipe. So the hydraulics are very, very tight through that area. A lot, the drainage area is quite big. This starts as far as Pinewood and Columbia and it comes down Columbia through St. John's, through the back of St. John's, uh, down Cedar Street, it makes its way through the Cedar Street Detention Basin. You also have Highway 6, or Highway 15, 6th Street, <clears throat> and from Hillcrest down Park Avenue, and from roughly Lincoln or so, Moffat maybe, down to Park Avenue, that whole drainage area. 7th Street, very similar, drains in two directions. Incredible amount of water. This is going to be the largest storm sewer system uh, within the city. <clears throat> we do have a, an estimate here, an updated estimate, $1.7 million. Of course, uh, the bidding climate is very hard to predict, but we do hope bids uh, come in under that. Uh, under that. Uh, the bid date is set for Tuesday, March 28th, giving bidders uh, four weeks. We solicited some interest from current contractors that are qualified. Uh, so this is the first of two projects. The second project that you have uh, is Bradford Street Improvements. Uh, also starting at 6th Street. This is actually going downhill to 10th Street. This is just a block north here, starting at the Civic Center. And so, especially in the wintertime, but in the spring rains, you'll notice that there's a lot of ponding of water. Uh, from Moffat Street down to Bradford to Robert Street particularly. And what, what this, the state had found out when they were designing the Highway 15 improvements is that the storm sewer system on the city side 
west of 6th Street is undersized. A lot of that is 12 inch. Uh, so we have this project designed. Uh, there's going to be a large portion of that is going to be 30 and 36 inch by the time it reaches 10th Street. So it's woefully undersized. This should, it should also be deeper, should eliminate the ponding of water from Moffat, Roberts, and Bradford. Uh, from this point forward, once once the highway project is completed, so both of these projects are going to precede, <clears throat> be constructed ahead of the Highway 15 project. That project starts uh, April of 2024. Uh, the initial work for the Highway 16 uh, 15 project will be uh, from Ash Street, the, the, the railroad tracks at the bottom of the hill, up to City Hall, and then after Fourth of July 2024. Uh, the contractor for the highway project and that project totally out of our hands. That'll start up July of uh, 2024. So these projects have a substantial completion date of July 1st, 2024. Final completion August 1st. We extended it as far as possible to encourage bidders to bid. Uh, we think if we uh, narrow that time period up to this year, uh, it might, uh, for contractors, are just too busy it might deter bidders. So we're trying to get a good price. So that Bradford project, a little less expensive, um, 1.003 uh, million dollars. So both projects are actually uh, quite expensive. The Park Avenue project, the entire Park Avenue will be torn up and replaced the pavement curb to curb. Bradford Street should just have the cross streets. Most of the pipe on, on Bradford will be installed on the north side of the street. This will be a large eight foot wide trench dug from 6th Street all the way down the hill. It actually started 10th Street, worked the way uphill. Uh, so it'll be quite a few months of um, diverted traffic for both projects. Uh, they're both um, we consider necessary. Uh, again, they dovetail with the uh, Highway 6, uh, uh, Highway 15, 6th Street project which is going to be doubling the number of storm inlets uh, from about 26 up to uh, a little over 50, 52 maybe. And so I think stormwater management will be greatly improved. And so we're certainly recommending that the council approve these two uh, for advertisement. And then once uh, uh, we collect hopefully uh, several bids, uh, we'll be back on the April 4th meeting uh, with the recommendation, should everything proceed. Have you contacted residents on that street on Bradford? We, well, uh, not yet. We have not yet uh, contacted residents, so. I mean, they should have some notice before we sure. approve them. Sure. <coughs> oh, well. Before we approve them, there should be some notices going out. Uh, it, it certainly was a project that's been on the one and six. I understood, okay. but still we need to give them some recognition that could be a lot of development going on down the street, a lot of mess. Are we losing trees? <laughs> we are We are losing a few trees on Bradford. That's an older part of town. Yeah. Good thing works out. I'm sure you're not going to be surprised <laughs> by this question, but mm -hmm. you did re reference July 1st. Correct. As a date of substantial completion ahead of July 4th. Okay, that was my question. <laughs> so what, I, I haven't checked it. It was, I believe the engineers checked that date, but typically from the Friday before the fourth, through the fourth itself, we prohibit um, construction, I mean, closure of any roads at that point in time. We will do the same for this project as well. I mean, it fortunately does not coincide with any major stuff that we can't work around. But you know, we, we do hope it's finished this year, quite frankly. And so it's an extended period of time. These are bid as two separate projects. We think we could award two separate contractors. They could be done concurrently. They could be done consecutively. We just have to wait and see. We're trying to have the maximum flexibility so we get the greatest number of bids. And so what, was the, what were the dates you were going to start or you're hoping to start? Uh, they can start as early as May 1st of this year, actually. And then? Uh, they could extend through, um, they could extend through, they, they, the engineers set it up where they, once they start, they only have 150 calendar days 
with which to complete the project. And that way we don't allow this to be ripped up for uh, over a year's period of time. So we restrict that period of time. Whenever the contractor does start, then they have that 150 calendar days. If it becomes too late in the year, they are allowed to suspend uh, for winter weather as well. And so they have to ask ask permission. So this is commonly done in, uh, you know, in I, that project. I get it. You know. I guess my, my request would be if you can start it closest to downtown and work away from downtown rather than the other direction. But I don't know how that works. I'm assuming they're working upgrade. Certainly, yes, because you um, <clears throat> Uh, you have a very difficult time managing uh, uh, on your way downhill the, the storm water that feeds in oh, yeah, what okay, you started I'm following, beginning. I'm following you. Yeah. Okay. We're, then we're building it bigger into a smaller, if it's still active. This is taking a larger amount of water than trying to ram it Got into it. something that's not built you. for. So yeah, theoretically, you would be finishing up the, da the down closer yeah. area to downtown right then. If they push it all the way to the end of the contract. Yeah, yeah. We, we certainly hope that they do not. And again, we're just providing the maximum flexibility. We have some indication that there's availability yet this year to complete the projects. We have to wait to see that the bidders submit bids. And so we're just trying to extend it as far as possible and, and get more competition, uh, more bids, and hopefully a better price. But in the yeah, end. start it right after the fourth. So, Mike, will there be uh, residents being cut off to their garages and their driveways? Um, there's a few on that face Park Avenue. There's a few that will have to be managed. Um, and on Bradford, I not, I, maybe there is one or two houses here on Bradford uh, at, at 7th Street. I think there's, there's think one in particular I know that are facing. And certainly, if, if construction starting May 1st, I mean, we'd certainly have notice uh, well in advance of, of that construction work. So, Any other questions or comments from the council? I have one. Yes, uh, because this is in a, a lot of this will be in residential and direct conflict with a lot of our citizens, is there <coughs> guidelines for the construction company on when to start, when to finish a work day? They do have limited hours. Uh, so certainly not before 7 a.m. Um, I don't think that they've done uh, based on the sun sunlight, so I think it's 5 p.m. Okay. Uh, typically, I'd have to check in the specifications to see what, what hours that they actually set. Generally speaking, our contractors do not put in a lot of extra hours. There is exceptions when they have a major paving operations. Neither of these projects have a significant paving operation as well. So we don't anticipate it would be it would extend you know past my PM at any point in time. Any other questions or comments? Otherwise we entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Move motion is there a second? Second. Motion by Fulton is there anything? Any further discussion? Seeing none, you register your votes. <coughs> display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Taylor, Tanya, Colterman, Singleton, Strice, and Worgen. Okay. Item five, after consideration and approval of bid documents for the wa water tower construction project and authorize the city to seek construction bids. Mike, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so we are uh, prepared to advertise for the rebid of the water tower uh, projects. I do have Brandon Cole with me here tonight, so our water wastewater director. And as with all of our water and wastewater capital improvements projects, Brandon and I will be working uh, together, uh, very similar to uh, Tim. So uh, early days for Brandon. So uh, I've been continuing on with the lead for the for the moment on this project here. So we bid this um, in November and we had a bid date just prior to Thanksgiving. We wound up, despite having six prime bidders uh, pay for our project documents, we got no bids. Um, and so there was a, a variety of reasons. We did have the engineer to contact. I did contact some bidders myself. This, what we did 
did look here is, is that there was too much ancillary work involved in the project. So all of the tank manufacturers are out of state, um, and so they have a difficult time getting local contractors to quote sections of their project. And they really, there's plenty of work, there's a lot of funding around, uh, and so they focused on the projects that were quite simple for them to bid up. And so it just by happenstance, all six had passed um, our project. So we did split it into three. <clears throat> so we have the tower itself, which is primarily the foundation, the concrete foundation that'll be uh, quite deep, probably 25 feet deep. It'll be the spheroidal uh, steel tank that's welded in pieces above it. And then there'll be some uh, control equipment and some piping and valves that are installed inside. Um, and then um, with that, some communication equipment will be attached to that tank. That will be done by the communication providers independently. Um, but it is, it is attached to the tank and part of that project. The tank will be coated. Um, we, did, uh, we did switch. We put the uh, simple sewered logo on three sides of the tank as the base bid, um, a more elaborate uh, logo and design on the tank as possible. That, that's, a, that's an alternate bid, so you get a, a price for that. We may modify that uh, over time. Uh, uh, Greg's, Greg's following up on that alternate design separately at this time. Um, so that'll be the water tower project. We anticipate that being somewhere in the range of two and a half million dollars. The utility and site work, this will be, we, we have some modification to the uh, piping that goes to the water tower and connects to the distribution system in two locations, some buried valves. Uh, there is a new drain line for the tank so that if it were to overflow um, on purpose or to drain the tank or accidentally through an over, overflow, um, the system has, has got too much water being delivered into it, needs a way to, to get out. So that storm sewer system has a couple of new storm inlets. That's going to be here on Jackson Street. And then when we dig up for the water main and for the storm sewer, we're going to be replacing some pavement. And so the pavement is in poor condition. We evaluated which sections of pavement we should uh, redo. Uh, the alley <coughs> connecting 8th Street and 7th Street behind the street shop. Uh, and behind the new water tower, that'll be paved as part of this project. So we're trying to make all the improvements, sidewalk, uh, ADA curb ramps, all at the same time. So once the water tower project is complete, essentially that uh, those former three house parcels will be a complete municipal facility. It will not be unlike either the library or the civic center in terms of look and feel, except it'll have a a, ra a rather large tank on it. And so the second contract is the utilities and site work. We anticipate that being roughly uh, $550,000 for the work. A little of that is, uh, is unknown. The third contract then is for demolition of the old tank. That'll occur after the new tank is completely commissioned. Uh, new equipment for the uh, communication providers, US Cellular and AT&T and last miles, our radio network provider. And once that's all installed, the new tank is functional, then the old tank will be drained and cut down in pieces, actually. And then we'll take the six large concrete pads beneath the tank out at the same time, uh, re-pour that slab that's actually in the streets, um, within the fence line of the streets department. And so that's the three projects. Really unknown what that demolition contractor, uh, what that bid price might be. I would anticipate that would be in, in a couple hundred thousand dollar range. We really have little idea. We have one bidder from Central Ohio that's uh, demonstrating interest uh, in that project. So we do have, I did already receive um, some responses from three of the six tank manufacturers. So we do think we'll get some of this reworked uh, uh, plan sets in three projects that will get some qualified bids. So uh, with your approval, <coughs> we'll um, start advertising uh, tomorrow. 
and we'll have a five week bid period. Uh, we'll have a March 29th Wednesday, 3 p.m. Uh, bid opening, public bid opening, and then we'll have a period of time to evaluate the bids and provide a recommendation to the same uh, body on April 4th as the current schedule with your approval. Yes. So is it, is it the same engineering firm, Mike, that put together the bid package last fall? It is. It is the same. So is, is that, that was Shimmer? That did it that? is Olson. Olson. Actually. Okay. Yeah. So it's a contract that we had signed 2018, 2017, it's a fairly old contract, actually. And so there was there was some design work, uh, initial preliminary work done, then it was tabled for a long period of time, and then we started up about two years ago in design, actually. So so all the extra work they had to do to split it from one bid package into three, did, did that amount to quite a bit then, too? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't have, I, I, those were invoices that um, that are approved separate from me, so I don't have a tally for you uh, tonight. But yes, we indeed, you know, we paid for the engineering services to uh, to separate those. So I imagine they didn't have to completely redo the design. The initial contract was fifty-five thousand, so I'm guessing that rework was in the low tens of thousands of dollars. Any other questions or comments for Mike? Otherwise, we entertain a motion. I'll make motion. a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Colton, second by Slate. The motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor of Wilkins, Kaler, Tanyas, Colchman, Singleton, Dyson, Morgan. Thank you, Mike. Item 6, consideration of an agreement with Bees Sweet Freeze LLC to operate a concession stand at the Dowden Municipal Pool for the, for the 2023 season. Greg. Yes, this is kind of like a reauthorization. Uh, we had Bees Sweet Freeze LLC do our concessions last year. Adam reported it went really well. If anybody attended the pool, it uh, seemed like the kids were happy. I know mine were. Uh, as frequenting the pool as often as they did with their friends. As long as I got their snacks. As long as they <laughs> spent my money. Um, but Megan Boggs is the, the primary principal of that LLC. Uh, was willing to do it and wanted to do it again. And so we're excited to keep the partnership going. And, and Adam had nothing but good things to say. And so uh, we'll do another one. At this point, If I think if this looks to be more of a long-term thing. We may look at readjusting this with Kelly next year uh, and having it automatically roll if we're not changing terms and there's not something big. But last year was our first shot at it. We didn't know it would, would fly after a year, but it seems like it's continuing on. So I think if this comes back next year, we should probably at least add uh, an auto renewal in it that until one of us gives each other notice, it just keeps going. So I can answer any questions you have. Second. Is there any further discussion? Should they be bringing snacks? Oh, yeah. Can you now please register your votes? <laughs> please display the votes. Voting in favor Wilkin, Kaler, Tanya, Colterman, Singleton, Strikes, and Morgan. Okay. Item 7, update on the Wellness Center. Great. Yeah, uh, we don't have anything to act on tonight, but I will give you an update. We've designated Monday as Wellness Center of Palooza Day, every Monday. And so if you want to get involved in Wellness Center items, options, visits, trips, meetings, you name it, every Monday, it's happening. Um, recently, we received the RFP responses for our construction management at-risk firms. We received seven responses, all uh, incredible firms, really well-known across the state. Uh, Councilmember Streisen, Councilmember Coulterman, Councilmember Miller were a part of that uh, process. Uh, my kudos to a massive team of 12 that reviewed those over the weekend and got me matrix responses. BBH, also Evan Gunn, our project manager for design, also did one as well as I did this time. Uh, and that was a requirement of our process that we approved with the council earlier in the winter. Um, we scored all those up, and today we notified the top three firms, and they'll be interviewed on Monday 
this coming Monday, the 27th, and the final one will be selected most likely. And so we will keep this thing moving because the biggest part of having the CM is bringing them in for the design process so they can value engineer and be a part of that discussion alongside the city as we work with the design firm. So uh, I think we have three great firms. I think there's definitely somebody in this group that can build us this project, build it of quality, and really work to try and keep us under budget. And if those are the three things we need, I think we got them there. We just need to select the right one now. So um, we continue on design. I think we've finalized the amount of area that we will need for the plaque <coughs> and the orientation of the building. We'll finalize that on Monday, but it looks like the orientation of the building will be directly west rather than facing south. Um, the design firm did um, some analytics in regards to sunlight, uh, utility costs, gas costs, heating, things like that. Uh, and there was not a discernible difference, really. And so by facing it west, though, that will change some of the design elements. We may add some more design elements to the south side. It will also place the pool and the potential future outdoor pool on the southern end rather than the orientation, which it seemed to be on the left side. If you were looking at straight on, it will now be on the right with the gyms and the basketball courts being on the north end. The predominant reason we really liked that was it eliminated traffic conflicts with pedestrians, specifically middle school students. Uh, this will be the home of the youth center, predominantly used by middle school students. We kind of trailed a path out of the school, crossing Waverly Road, and by having it oriented facing west, uh, you will not cross, before it was cross Waverly Road, and then you had to cross two lanes of traffic within the parking lot to get to the front door. And we basically said, you know, it's going to be the old mule cart path. They're going to go from the corner of where they crossed on Waverly Road right to the front door. And if it doesn't matter how many parking stalls or whatever they'll cut through, that's the way middle school kids are. So let's eliminate that as a problem. This orientation does that. The other oddity that it created, not by, by happenstance, not by purpose, but... Uh, is based on the area that will be donated and platted, there'll be a substantial amount of level green space to the east. And in just talking with uh, at least Adam Bodie, our current Parks and Rec uh, assistant director, who will be housed out there and run Parks and Rec programming, um, that area can be painted and utilized for soccer, flag football, uh, other things, and have it right there. And then you can also utilize the facility Parents can go in and work out whether kids are, you know, out at soccer practice or something like that. There's just more of that multi-use, and then we can grow into that area where that will be filled up by the field house and other areas further on. But even with the field house, you'll probably still be able to keep the green space and utilize it for the foreseeable future. Uh, we also saw some other designs in regards to um, what the Wake family may envision for that area surrounding the wellness center specifically. Um, some civic uses so that that helped us give us a vision and feel comfortable with that orientation but that will be finalized and then turned over uh, to the Wake family and their developers and designers to finish off that orientation and the plat will start coming down the line um, so that's another big one we turned in the application with the help of uh, sewer changing the game for $562,000 request from the CCCFF grant and we just reiterated the fact that everything that we didn't get last year, all the holes they kind of noted in our application, all of those have been filled. We passed the election. We raised all the funds. We further in design to have a very much more of a definitive number now. Uh, and we're a lot closer to that. A lot of things that were up in the air. Again, maybe if the vote was going to fail, we didn't have a good CCCFF application. Let alone the fact that it's $200,000 more this year than it was last year ask and so uh, Ryan uh, helped us with that and Shane Bob did a lot of work on that uh, myself and Derek uh, did a lot of the review and, and got the things that they needed to get that put together for us and we submitted that on time so um, we'll have another a big round of, of, of grant work will be getting done here uh, also with Jana Hughes going into the legislature we kind of have a new fundraising lead and so they'll be getting started because at the end of the day, we feel like, you know, this project's going to happen, so we need to start doing the fundraising for that second tier, which we think is the foundational tier. This is the foundation that's going to oversee 
the large scale capital improvements and repairs to the facility for the foreseeable future for forever. And so they're building up a wing for that and also understanding the current climate of, you know, inflation and things like that. But that, that fundraising arm is now going to take off this spring again. And so we're very excited for that. Um, the last one is we already have applications in for the executive director. They're starting to roll in already. I'm getting about a call a day from either, you know, a secondhand person that knows of people that will be interested, but I, I'm almost 100% confident you're going to have your executive director in March, and that will be taken care of. You have good candidates that have already acquired, uh, and they're already rolling in, so. That's what's going on with the wellness center. So and it just these meetings will get closer to closer together and we'll be more in the weeds. Again, thank you to Councilmember Streisen, Miller, Coulterman for their work. Councilmember Streisen has to go through probably more than any of, mm -hmm. of them because he also hits, sits on the uh, changing the game board as well. So we got a lot of stuff going on there. I see myself coming and going. <laughs> right? <laughs> Is there any way we can attach the water tower to the Center? Uh, I don't think so, unless we want to swim around we, inside. We had a lot maybe. of bidders on the wellness center. Yes, we did. We had a lot. Again, uh, I think, um, again, we don't do this on a regular basis, so you kind of have to read what BBH is seeing. And they said, that's good. A few months ago, you would have gotten two. And you got seven really good ones. And so that is very encouraging that we'll be able to get our project done and we'll have a really quality group that was interested in building it for us out of any of the ones we have left. And any of them that really submitted, they're really a great group of well-known um, contractors and construction crews. So we're excited. Any other inquiries or questions on the Wellness Center? I can't tell you right now, but uh, the first, I believe next month will be the first month we'll see receipts rolling in on sales tax. So I just got it from for December today from Nick. We got the payment and he processed all that and showed me the report. So I believe next month will be the first month we'll get a report that will have the increased sales tax, which went into effect January 1st. So we'll start seeing what the monthlies look like for revenue generating. We'll pay the upfront costs to BVH and the contractors, and then we'll submit those invoices to Sewer Changing the Game, which is holding uh, a majority of the money. They are the one that won the grant, and so uh, that's how the cash flow will go. And Kelly and I are working out the details on the final MOU, so you'll probably see that in the next 30 days as well. Seeing no questions or comments, see Manchester's report. Um, most of what I've been doing, I just reiterated to you in the Wellness Center update, but i um, been working a lot with Brandon, kind of getting him up to speed on some of the things and then getting filled in about what he's been up to down there. Uh, I just commend him in this first week. He described some of those days as drinking out of a fire hose, uh, but he's done an incredible job of communicating with me, and that's been a big part of some of my days. Um, working with, through administration, Derek's been on vacation, so we have, that's why we have Mindy. Uh, with us tonight, and so working through a number of those things. LB840, DTR.